So we start this meeting tonight about biography. Uh, what I've done is assembled the photographs from some of you. I think most of you, maybe a couple of maybe didn't get it into me, but it'll be an interesting time, I think, for you to see the photographs of the older work and perhaps newer work that, that some have done. And so with that, I'm going to do a share screen first. So the first person we come to is Brian Graham. Wow, that's nice. How's that look on your screen? See it? Very good. Oh, yeah, I sure do. That is nice, Brian. Holy frick. That, that was done on uh, Red Alder. I did a couple on that way back. And um, <clears throat> here you see that knot was uh, perfectly red, and then it was sort of going towards the horse with the red. <clears throat> and over the years, it's kind of oh, mellowed and yellowed. I don't think so. I don't know. I see you're on the screen up there. Sure. And uh, the, uh, those pieces are neat because the, they came don't up have bark them. around the outside of them. Uh, what did I say? Got it. I'm pretty plain. The screen came. The screen came. Hmm. Well, so you can. Uh, that was that was from a pattern uh, that I got. We, I just loved that pattern though. It kind of gave the and it sort of gave the wind action to the horses and the way their movement was really the colors. That piece. The only thing I wished when you can't see it on the screen, but it, I should have sanded it a little bit better at the start. Mm -hmm was some scratches uh, down where the horses are, but you can't see it, so it's good. <laughs> well, I love the design, the simplicity of it together with the background. What a combination, it just stands right out. Mm, yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. Very nice. Did There's you use a special enough. stain or paint on the horses themselves? No, I used the uh, the the oil pencils again. That's what I like to use on there, and uh, just gave it a spray with the uh, acrylic coating. You know, um, clear, <clears throat> clear coat. And yeah, it stayed very well over the years. I I have that one up, and my uh, the next one that you'll see. I, I, I uh, how big is that piece right here on our screen? Uh, about. Um, 12 by 12, maybe something like 12 inches by 12 inches. That's mm. pretty large. It's almost the same size as my laptop screen then. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. a little bigger than what we see on our screens. Okay, we'll go to the next one here. Is the same kind oh, of nice. Wow. Oh, my my uh, <laughs> wife loves that one. She's got that up a above her computer. She took that one away from me when I first did it. <laughs> it's very simple, but I, I really love it too. It's uh, the eyes and everything really came out great. So, but over the years, it's also faded a bit, but it's on that red alder again. And uh, I really love working on that. Although I haven't been able to pick up any pieces like that since I did those ones. I have another one that I did with some whales on it. Um, and that was the only three pieces I had picked up at the Ottawa Wood Show one year. It was really nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful Where you? I think the problem of fading, all of us face that. And part of it is that patine effect, the oxidation of the wood cells, which the burning doesn't actually change much, but the background changes to become darker. So the wood burning seems to disappear in the color. Right. But what we also face is that uh, burning will also come off. If you think of the campfire uh, out in the woods and you, uh, if you went hiking or something, you come along a campfire from last year, the logs last year of that fire would be dark, burnt black. But after a winter out or maybe a couple of winters out, it's now gray. So the patine thing takes place on that piece of wood, as well as the fact that the carbon has now been washed off or brushed off with the snow, however it be. Yeah, well, that's true. There was quite a bit more, um, um, you know, <clears throat> fur markings on there, a lot more. 
than we have there left, but still looks pretty good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, that's really, really nice for sure. Is that, uh, did you use that oil, uh, or at least the, the coloring again, the same? Yeah the, yeah, the oil pencils, yeah. I got into that when uh, a gal, Linda Eves, you might have known her from the Toronto area. <clears throat> she gave some pyro courses way back about 20 years ago, and uh, she's died since, but she had cancer. But um, she was a great teacher, and we did some really nice work with her and she taught us a lot <clears throat> at our club she came for a weekend uh -huh. we had her we had her here so it was great okay we'll look at the next picture comes up with the halloween scene yeah that's that's lost a little bit too over the years but i love putting it up at halloween so i thought i'd show that one today since we're getting close to the season. Great. Uh, one of the chaps in our club uh, makes those uh, boards for us. Um, he's in uh, outside of the city here. And uh, he he even did the, you know, the, the, those, the frame sort of. So it's kind of nice sort of work for us. That's on basswood. And again, with the colored pencils. I love the silhouette like that. And the characters have got great faces on them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were pretty neat. I'd like to do that one again. Yeah, it's kind of a neat one to do. Okay, I think this next one is maybe the fourth one you said. Yes, it is. Yeah, I thought with uh, Remembrance Day coming up also that <clears throat> a show one that I did a few years ago, same kind of, um, you know, wood wood again from the same guy <clears throat> and uh yeah we with the pencils and everything but i i put that up i have a, a rotating um i have a whole box that i sort of rotate in the kitchen because my wife won't let me hang them up in the living room or anywhere so we rotate a whole bunch in the kitchen and uh, as the months or the seasons go by i um uh, i put up a new one so it's kind of a nice way to show your stuff that's a great idea yeah so i have a box sort of you know christmas on to the end of the year and then i just put one back and take another one out and if a new if i do a new one i like i i insert it in hmm. well next picture i think we come to brian bell yes I worked on this uh, 2017. Uh, just started working. It, it was, uh, I think it was in a calendar. I'm not sure. There was a little bit more uh, toward the backdrop, but uh, I kept going and it ended up, uh, some of the people in our club took it to Ottawa, sort of thing, and it won a prize. Uh yeah, in Ottawa in uh, 2018, I guess. But oh, it was nice. kind of fun. I it's the kind of stuff I like doing and creating the uh, the branches, uh, making them look round. Uh, working on the the dar the darkness. As uh, one instructor told me, work on the eyes. You get the eyes, then you can work on the rest of it. To, to uh, try to then stick the eye in after you've done a bit, it can you kind of you may not leave enough space, or it may not uh, kind of pick up as much. But that was fun. I enjoyed doing that one. It was so. A question for you, Brighton: Is that uh, uh, a photograph, or was it an illustration, or what was the original? Uh, the, I said. I, think it was, I guess it was a, a photo. Uh, I can't remember actually whether it was a calendar one. I don't, I honestly forget. I honestly forget. But it had, uh, yeah, there didn't, there were a lot more branches. I had to decide I couldn't put in all the branches and stuff. So I, I just did enough to make it work. Uh, 
I, I honestly can't remember the, uh, the original. One of the reasons I asked that is because when, when I work from a uh, photograph, uh, I spend, you know, I, I'll take from it thinking it's 100%. I probably will do 60 to 75% of what I see. Yeah. I get the form and shape and so on like that. But when another person has uh, draw, done a drawing from original photograph or original scene, and they, they go to 65, 70%. If I do it from theirs, I probably drop it another 25%. Yeah. Well, I did. I know there was stuff uh, behind the main bird. There was some more things, which I, I couldn't see the point. I didn't know what it was. So I know that that's above the main body. There was another, I think the wing went out that way somehow. I just didn't understand how that happened. So I left that out. And I, I'm not. I think there was there were certainly were a lot more branches, and uh, yeah, that's so. That's that's what I did. So you're you're saying be careful, especially if it's if it's a given photo from a particular artist or something. I know you have mentioned that before, yeah. but I think it's it's a real good illustration because you. You've taken quite a bit of time on the nest and did a lot of work in that area. But I would imagine that as you're doing that, you get to the point point, say, that's enough. No more branches there. No more branches here. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that happens to me often. But if it's a photo, if it's a copy from a calendar picture, which is a lot of stuff, that's, that's there's nothing. Uh, you can copy that. I think. It's, yeah. It's, I'm not an artist, so. You did I, pretty good. I make, <laughs> I make do by as much as that. Anyway, that's what it is. And that's an osprey, is it? I seem to like it in Ottawa. Anyway. <laughs> is that an osprey? Got a red ribbon. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, <clears throat> Brian, that. Uh, I was just going to say one comment on your branch there that you had. That was beautifully done. It almost stands right out. I like that effect. I, I think that's probably why you were judged a good, you know, yes. got a prize for yeah. that. Because that's lovely the way that's almost 3D on that one. Yeah, I kind of like it too. <laughs> yeah. it's getting, the, getting the dark line, getting the, you got to get down under and, and uh, uh, I did a couple. I've done a couple others for things on branches, and the, the stroking has to be uh, around. You got There's no straight line on a branch. No, yeah, any right on that. Yeah, that's so for it's sure. It's got to go around and around. Well, one okay. artist said a long time ago that there's no straight lines in any photograph or any picture, <laughs> or any no straight lines in nature. No, that's right. And even the, the bull rushes and that type of thing, they, they look straight, but if you look at them when you're doing yeah. that, uh, they're not straight. Yeah, there's no straight lines. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to jump over to some raccoons here. Yeah. Well, this I just did fairly quickly. I just got going. I saw this. Uh, again, there they were sitting on something quite different. And I just created uh, that background and just decided to, can I make these little raccoons? And so it's all, all just little lines, at light and dark, and there it is. It seemed to, it seemed to work. So that's, that's what I like uh, trying to do. You know, I didn't draw, you know, you can't draw the, the thing around the uh, raccoon. It just, it just sort of emerged. I know the thing they're on wasn't in the original picture that way, but I had to make it work. Did it quite quickly. I was amazed. A couple of nights. Any comment? <laughs> Again, the, the flow of the, the, the thing on the trees are round. And the dark eyes, you got to get the dark eyes and then you can work away with the rest. I like the way you have the shadow underneath the uh, one of the raccoons there on the log. 
looks yeah. good. I find with these, you could keep working on them and adding and adding, and then at some point you have to say, that's it, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> Spoil it. Enough, Murray. Okay, there's oh. a turtle, though. Or there's turtle. a turtle. Again, working at, uh, I did that fairly quickly. It was, that was a tough one to get the shadow and to get the shell, but it, that's what it is. I, I don't think it's quite as impressive as the raccoons, but it, uh, give it a try. Try to make it look like a rock that we're sitting on. That didn't work quite as well as it should have, but I wouldn't rate that one of my highlights, but it's, uh, Murray wanted a few things, so that's what I did. <laughs> Is that a photograph again, or did you get that, or? Uh, I've taken some turtles of pictures. Uh, I think it, I think it was on uh, one of the uh, calendars from uh, one that has a, quite a lot of animals uh -huh. calendar picture, but it was it had other things. I just took that little part. Your your foot is the back foot there is really well done. I have trouble doing those like the toes and things on animals. <clears throat> That's the hard. Yeah, I didn't know how to do the shadows, the under shell, because there's actually white, but it, it's hard to do that. It's hard to leave. Oh, one thing I just ask if uh, Keith could jump in here for a moment. Uh, one thing that I think that I recall when we've talked together and I was watching Julie Bender's thing, uh, what she was doing is, in, for instance, on the back leg or the front leg, when you've got those scales and wrinkles and toenails yeah. and that kind of thing, they take a long time. She took a long time just to concentrate on one portion only, not to move on to anything else. Yeah. So you had that one conquered. Oh, Keith, yeah. Keith, give us that. A that yeah. Yeah, that's right. And and Julie works from reference photos and she's very religious about when when you're say working on that back foot that you have have the uh, the, the photo with the back foot sitting right in front of your nose and, and right beside what you're working on and and uh, sort of focus on getting every little bit of detail that you can. Um, but uh, uh, anyhow, her, uh, she, she sort of does, her burning is, is kind of like photorealistic, I guess would be the word for it. I really have the minimum number of tools, of, of tips, of three or four tips. And, I, and uh, I, I'm sure that the, the better burning have more, equipment, more pieces to work with. But I think one thing you should mention here too, that Julie Bender uses one tip period. That's it. So, yep, one tip for everything. <laughs> it's the way you hold it. Now, yeah. one thing that in artwork, when I'm doing the drawing, or uh, if you say, for instance, if you were gonna do a painting or a drawing that would be uh, two feet by three feet, two feet high, three feet wide. And what the artist did a long time ago, and they try to teach that in our art classes now is you'll do studies of that particular painting before you start. So a study may, if you have, let's say two people in the picture, one left, one right, <laughs> the left one's got his left arm up and right arm down. The right person's got his two arms in front of him, kind of a questioning position. And what the artist does then is to take a study just of the, left arm and then the right arm of the left person you don't draw the whole body you just study each area so one thing i've done with the stu students that i have is i'll take a piece of a white bristle board kind of a cardboard so you can't see through it and you cut out a square uh, for instance if i did this if i was on the turtle now i cut a square out that would be big enough to go around that back leg and have a bit of the shell in it and draw just what's inside of that square. Don't worry about how the rest of it fits together. 
what you're doing intently studying that particular part of the turtle. In fact, you'll get to so good at it that you could almost draw that picture of that back leg without having the rest of the turtle area. Just do that as, a, uh, as only one part of it. Then you move to the front leg and do the same thing or around the eye, around the head of the turtle. So what you, your picture eventually ends up being a study of maybe 16 different parts of the turtle. When you go to put it together and do the drawing, you'll remember and you're going to do the whole outline then and you'll have a sketch on your, on your position on your paper as to where you want it mounted on the wood on the rock or whatever. As you start to draw it, you'll remember those special areas that you studied. And that, that what you're doing is disciplining your eyesight to look just at one spot and no further than that. Because the danger of us, especially with artwork is something like that, especially when you go to different formats like, uh, like watercolors or something with acrylic. With wood burning is something same, similar because you've got these small tiny strokes that you're working with or the shading part of the bit, the tip. And you want to get on with it. You got to get this done. You got to back up for a minute. If you want to do something good, I mean, that turtle is a great one to look at right now, but it could be much better when you put 16 hours into the back leg. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, you'd be like, you're saying to me, okay, sure, that's great. But I'd be so, I was so sick of it now. <laughs> I, I couldn't put 16 hours into this thing. I was, I would be tough getting 16 minutes on that. <laughs> anyway but that's okay. if you just did that study idea even when you yeah. have your calendar pictures if you cut that little section out yeah. do you remember the when they're making a film and you see the old movies you'll see the movie directors in the film and he's got his uh forefinger and his thumb up on one hand and the same on the other hand and he makes a square in the air and looks at it what he's doing is a study of that particular area to see if the scene looks right Mm. we so, do exactly the same thing with other pictures we do so it's just a uh, something you may not do that intention on that one spot but give it a try to see what happens and you don't have to have a masterpiece each time just a piece of the turtle to do it but then you also then you start deciding well maybe i don't like doing a turtle because it's got too many scale like wrinkles and stuff on it and it's just way over what i'd like to do you make that decision to start with. Just a simple suggestion for you. Thank you. Okay. Any thoughts, Keith? Uh, in addition to the turtle, I'd, I I kind of like the way the rocks turned out there. It's very got very nice yeah. uh, texture. There's lots of detail in it. It, it, it doesn't overpower the turtle. And uh, it, it uh, uh, lo and behold, it looks like a rock. <laughs> It really right. does. Thank you. It's good stuff. Who's the next person we'll chew on here? <laughs> oh, one more. Oh, my. That's nice there, yeah. Now, this I did this a uh, number of years ago. What does it say? 2013, I don't know. I was in uh, working in Scarborough. Anyway, it just it started out, and of course, you ended up sitting. You got to have it sitting on a rock, of some kind of that. That just, and I really like working with this, uh, with the uh, the wood cut the way it is, with the bark, gives an extra bit. So I worked pretty hard with uh, on getting that uh, those feathers properly. Uh, very good instructor with our Scarborough, where I was before. So, at any rate, it, uh, I, I put that in the show, but I think someone else in our club was doing it. And as soon as I knew she had her entry in, I knew I was not going to be one. <laughs> <laughs> How thick is the piece of wood? What, uh, what kind of a finish do you have in that, Brian? Is that like, is that a, a gloss varnish or what? Yeah, it's just the, the uh, <clears throat> uh, Oh, I lost the name. It, it's very simple. This is uh, your, your thing. Uh, you're, you're all. Uh, I've lost it. A, a semi gloss, like a semi, uh, like it. Yeah. I guess it's yeah. just the way the light light is shining on it. It looks like a, a gloss, but but 
I could be wrong. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a, a, a. I went probably too glossy. But. A satin or something. I'm not sure, but it's it's satin it's, finish, it's satin finish. Satin. That's what I try and get. You know. mm, it's nice. How thick is a piece of wood? Uh, I don't know whether it's. I, I doubt it's more than an inch. It's certainly not more than an inch and a half. Uh. Yeah. So that's down in. I expose half inch. It's really a high relief then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think when they when you enter it in a show, it's not called. Uh, this is a relief carving. It's not a wood burning entry. I believe that's the way it is. Anyway, you get the rock, and you still had to do the rock and create the lines with that. It was kind of fun keep working away. Do I do more? Do I cut a little bit more out of that rock? Or... So, uh, I was pleased with that one. Anyway, enough of me. <laughs> Hang on there, bud. We'll get you again. <laughs> Keith Kirkham. Yeah, nice. Got two photos tonight for this slide and then another slide coming with the contrast to the, the original picture. So Keith, tell us about this yeah. picture. This, uh, Murray sent out a, an email shortly after our last meeting with a, a website by named Pyrography Made Easy. And I've been familiar with it for uh, four, four or five years, I guess. Uh, Brenda Wilkie is the name of the person who, who runs it. And... Uh, she does a project about every two weeks. Sometimes there's uh, it, it's with a, and very very thorough tutorials printed along with with the projects. Uh, lately, she's uh, discovered YouTube and she'll do a uh, a YouTube video along with the written uh, uh, tutorial. This was from November of 2017, and she and her husband, I don't know where she lives, but she and her husband vis visited a mine in Colorado, and they took a picture of, of the, uh, uh, the, the, the local SUV that they used to take pic people around the mine site, and uh, Anyhow, she did, decided to do this uh, uh, tutorial with with this uh, uh, this car, and uh, she didn't know what kind of a car it was. I didn't really either. And when I sent this to to Murray, uh, I says, "I'm not sure what what kind of a car this is." Well, I, I've got. About 10 minutes later, I got a probably a four page long email back from Murray, who is, uh, is a, a, he, he wouldn't describe it himself as an expert, but uh, he sure portrays himself or she, he sure makes like he's an expert on, on this. And he told me all everything you want to know about uh, Model A's and Model T cars. And uh, uh, Murray, I, I, it's going to take me the next month to go through everything, but it sure is interesting. Uh, well, so Keith, I just interject there that uh, Keith and I come from Saskatchewan where cars never wear out. There's no salt in the road, only winters that are minus 40 Fahrenheit or Celsius. And uh, when I was 16, I got my first car. It was a Model T, <coughs> Model T Ford Tudor, T-U-D-O-R. My dad knew where it was on this farm, not far from where my grandparents lived. And we went up to take a look at it. And the dad said, well, you go ahead and make your deal. And so I looked at the farmer and I said, how much is it? How much would you sell it for? He said, well, I don't want to charge you too much. How's $10 sound? So I got my first car for 10 bucks. I sat on a, on a 
about a 10 gallon pail behind the wheel. There was no seat, the seats were all gone. There was nothing but the springs left. And so we sat on this car and my dad towed me by tow rope back to Regina, 60 miles. No power steering, just a real rapidly old trap. There's lots more to the story, but that's how I got involved with Keith. Keith and I both are prairie chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so let me should go to the next picture here to help you tell you more about what happens with, I'll come back to this one in a minute, but it's also in the next photograph. And just to, to mention to everybody here, this is a, this car or this vehicle is a kind of a crossover between the Model T Ford, Ford Model T, and up into the 150 Model A Model B. For the Model A Model B had different wheels than the Model T. And that's what you see on the car on the left and also in Keith's picture. And Model T, he built one that was called a, a stake bed, S-T-A-K-E. And basically it meant that you could put stakes up the side of it to haul lumber in it or your wood or whatever you'd like. And so they used that same stake bed design on the back to build this SUV model to take people to the mine. And it's a quite a thing. Now this particular model is the probably 150A Model A or Model B, but it has a Model T fenders. That's what is such a unique character in, in, in the particular kind of car here. Crank start on it. Fantastic. I got more stories than Keith could put in four pages. So that's enough of me. Tell Keith what happens when you draw the picture, when you do the picture, compared to the photograph here. Um, it, well, first of all, I, I, it was probably at least two years ago that I, I started this picture and I got it 90% done and, and just lost steam on it and set it in a box in the garage. And I decided uh, lately I've been working on my work in progress box and I pulled this one out to finish it. There's an awful lot of uh, things I've learned since I started this. Uh, and the picture I've done is I've basically worked off of the pyrography picture that Brenda Wilkie did from this original. I didn't start with the original. And one that's one thing I've learned since I've started is that uh, is, is always work off of an original photograph. Because if you're working off of somebody, uh, uh, somebody's drawing from a photograph, then whatever errors go into the drawing go into uh, in, into what you're doing. You just you copy the errors, and I'm not saying there were a lot of errors there. It's just it's not. I, I think I would have done a better picture if I had caught if I'd started off with. The photograph that's on the right hand side and it would have uh what i saw from her uh picture uh pyrography picture was her interpretation of that photograph and uh uh and, 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 and anyhow it it uh uh i and i i've lately i've too i've uh in, in the last year, I've learned an awful lot more about shading than what I knew when I I started this picture. And uh, I, I would have done done a lot better job on uh, uh, particular one area is putting into detail on the wheels, which, uh, as you can tell, de deserve. A, there, there's a lot of detail in those wheels. And uh, uh, if I were going to do it over again, I would I would. Uh, uh, try and do a much better job of putting that detail in. But uh, uh, anyhow, it's it's uh, uh, it, it it it's. I've always wanted to do cars, and this is the first one I've ever done, and I'm really glad that it's my first one because it's. Uh, I think it's it's really a beautiful car, and uh, I'm 
all in all, I'm quite glad with the way things turned out. I was gonna I was gonna mention that from the start that the wheels were great. I love the wheels. You've done a fantastic job, I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's very, very nice for sure. It's uh, a perfect reproduction. Now, did you, uh, now from that print, from the, from the original print, uh, did you make a black and white copy or something to enable you to um, draw the picture on the, on the, I guess that's on a piece of, piece of birch, uh, well, yes, white birch? Yes, yes, it is. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, did I make a black and white copy? Uh, well, it's like I said, I, I, I didn't use this photo. I used her, her, uh, uh, the, the picture she burned from this, this photo. So it was, it was more or less colored exactly the same as what, uh, uh, what mine turned out. And, and yes, I did. I made a black and white copy of her, her, uh, her burning. And I do that with pretty well every everything that I do is I make a black and white copy. That's very very nice, uh, Keith. That turned really nice. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's an awful lot of fun, and uh, I've got a in in my uh, archive. I've got oh, probably twenty different car pictures, and I'm. I'm uh, looking forward to in the near future. I'm going to try some another one. Uh, I I really enjoyed doing person? it. What was the name of the person and how is that available? Brent, on? Brenda Wilkie is her name, and I would highly recommend her website. It's called Pyrography Made Easy. Okay. And she has uh, going back to at least 2017. Uh, she's got at least two projects every month, uh, since in f four years and maybe it's five and maybe it's even six. And some of her, her projects are, uh, are, are very, very basic, very beginner level. Uh, some of them are, this is probably the most, uh, complicated one that she's done. Yeah. And every one of them has has a very very detailed uh, written tutorial as to how she does it, and uh, she's uh, 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 she describes in detail every step that she makes. So it's it's a great website to go to if, if you want to take a crack at something and and. Uh, uh, and and learn and she's got she's got birds that she's done she's done uh, Christmas ornaments uh, she does uh, she'll do a, a project just shading showing different ways of doing shading she she's got one where she goes through all sorts of different kinds of tips and how she uses them uh, uh, I, I can't remember everything that uh, that she does, but uh, again, it's it's pyrography made easy, and that's all one word. Dot com. Well, that's great, Keith. It really helps us to see the background of what you're feeling on it when you did it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the, uh, the old days back. Uh, the end of my story was I sold a car after I restored it to almost mint condition. Everything except the upholstery inside of it I had the seats covered and that kind of thing. A new roof put on, which is a fabric switch uh, stretched over top of the um, birch uh, birch uh, pieces of wood shaped as an arch. You can see that in the left hand picture there. And then the guy bought it for $125. I thought I made a killing but he cut it up and made the body into a hot rod. So it was one of those feelings. You're not sure if you liked it or not, <laughs> but the money was good. When you're 17 years old, make 150 bucks. That was a good deal. Okay, we'll go to the next picture here. Next slide. That comes up with Lloyd Thomas. He's a, a tackled a really difficult picture. 
Um, this was a snake. I did it from uh, one of the Harry Potter. Um, you do a lot of Harry Potter, I know. Yeah. This one was uh, <clears throat> and this is actually a, a plate for a book that I did it on. Uh, again, this is one of my Christmas presents I'm working on. Um, I wasn't sure how to do the, the uh, shading and that. So, I mean, I've got a long ways to go before I catch up to the uh, quality of the work that we've seen here tonight. But I'm really loving all the stuff that everybody's doing here. And I'm hoping that I can pick up some really good hits, hints and tips from everybody. Um, the only thing I did here, I think I did some shading and the skin in the background. I just did the um, figure eights, like they said with the leaves. I think they tried that with the leaves. So I tried that here just to see how that would work on it. So this is probably only my uh, second, second attempt at wood burning, but I thought I'd try it anywhere. It's carved, I, I did carve it first. So if it does look like I uh, managed to make it rounded, it's because it is rounded. So is this uh, actual full round or is it a, a, a high relief kind of thing? It's a high relief. Okay. Oh, you can see the chisel marks on the right hand section of the picture there. Yeah, yeah, I gouged that out a bit. It's a powerful picture. I started putting it together. This is what it sort of looks like. Um, we put it into a book and the book, I've cut it out. This is where we put all the um, dice for Dungeons and Dragons and that. Uh -huh. mm. Any questions or comments for Lloyd? Suggestions? I got a long ways to go, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Murray. Would you say he's brave? <laughs> Robert. You're up. Okay, this was uh, done by a Polish artist and uh, back in the, about a century ago, and it was given by the Polish government to the Ottawa or the uh, Canadian government. And it's in uh, the art gallery here in Ottawa now. And they posted this uh, story of this in the newspaper. And I just took a picture of the newspaper, and that's where I got my original from. It was just out of the newspaper. Mm. <laughs> but it's just the water down below, and uh, these couple going down this hill down to the to the edge of the water. And there was a background scene of the cemetery and uh, a few boats out in the water and an island out there. So this, the original would be about a hundred and some years old, eh? Yes, yes, yeah. And you think, think back then to a hundred and some years ago, we don't have razor tip or any of the fancy tools we've got for burning today. And so this oh. is true poker art. Yeah. Heat up the wire and then you burn it till the wire gets cool and then go back and change wires. I guess so, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm then, not sure how they did it back then. What what is the dimensions of the original? Is it a large? Well, yeah, it was I guess about maybe twice that size, I guess. Uh, yeah. But that, that's about uh, 14 inches across or on length and about 12 inches in width. Uh -huh. So you reduce the picture um, on a photocopier, uh, Bob, or what? Yes, I did, yeah. Actually, what I did is I, I took my, uh, my camera and I held it back from the photo when I took it. So that reduced it then, and then I just ran it through the printer. 
It's very busy for sure. You did a, did a great job. It's uh, how long would it have taken you to do that? Uh, I did it in about a week. I don't know how much time I spend every day. I didn't spend every day on it, but you know, I just went back and forth to it. And, and again, my leaves were the figure eight again. So lots of detail. Yeah. Didn't turn out too bad. Yeah, for sure. It looks great. And this one was just a, a picture I seen, but I was a little disappointed in my uh, my edges of my circle. I got, I'm gonna have to do something to try to improve to get those more exact, you know? That's tough. Maybe if I had used a compass, but I don't know how it would turn out with a compass, but it might've been better. How big is that, uh, Bob? Like, I mean, in circumference, like, a, um, what is it's a fairly big circle, or like, is it about eight inches? Eight inches, yeah. I, I, I sometimes try and look for a large a cover off a large um, uh, can or a, a jar or something, and uh, and just trace a circle around it if, if you can find one that big, you know. Yeah. That cer certainly helps to uh, give you more perspective. I don't know. It, works for me sometimes but then i'd have to get for each circle they're they're a different diameter so, so you have to reduce keep reducing that circle i think a compass is the best way to go yes yeah and what i've done for what i want to duplicate or make sure the birds are the same or similar to what i see the original as I'll use a piece of transparency, like the overhead transparencies used to have overhead projectors. Right. Or you can get the miler from the art stores too, which is kind of a, uh, you can draw on one side of it quite easily because it's got kind of a, not a stipple finish, but it's a rough surface. It's uh, opaque. You can see through it. And I'll lay that over top of the picture that I want to duplicate and draw with a, Sharpie, a uh, fine marker on the surface of that uh, original, like on my miler, to get the shape and the size and everything, the proportions of the geese or the ducks or whatever I'm going to draw. And then because I might, in being in the business of carving and trying to duplicate things and produce things again for people to buy, what I do is I take a pair of scissors, very sharp, and cut around the outline of the bird that I drew on the miler. And then I could lay that miler pattern on top of the wood and draw around it with a pencil and get almost exactly the same shape and size and proportions. Mm -hmm. And I can make, like, I even do that with photographs, but you'll see it here after a few minutes, but of uh, animals that I've taken pictures of and I duplicate. I'll, print two photographs and take the one photograph and cut around the shape of the animal to give the proportion. So like, I don't end up with a German shepherd looking like a Labrador. Oh, yeah. I want it to be the exact model of it in that way. So uh, that would help there. But I think I've used a compass, but the, the thing that you run into and the difficulty is the outside edge, the big, the one big line uh, the big circle on the outside edge is that the wood has these soft spots and hard spots. And it'll drive a burner crazy. Yes. Yeah. What are you going right to make the same size line? Keith's got something around right. Can I jump in? This is something that uh, our good friends at Lee Valley sell. And it's, it's uh, uh, sort of a, a well, it's a piece of heavy pla heavy mylar plastic or whatever, and it, it's in the shape of a circle. And there's there's um, uh, uh, a hole in the center. It, I'm sorry, it's hard hard to see. But uh, and then there's there are holes. Just a second, Keith. Hang on. I'm going to stop share here. Just a moment. Okay. And it'll be able to see what you're holding. What you're holding. Okay. There. Great. Yeah. And there's there's holes radiating out 
uh, they look to be about every quarter inch or so. Okay. And uh, this is, is great for drawing uh, circles on wood. And, and I use it, I, I, I do a fair number of uh, round plates. And another advantage to this is that um, uh, you can use this on a, a round piece of wood, you can use it for finding the center. Okay, but right. uh, like I say, Lee Valley sells them. There's two different models. They have this one, which is 16 inches across. And as I said, there's, there's a hole. So you can uh, do circles at uh, uh, their, their quarter inch uh, radius, every quarter inch on the radius. So they'd be half inch on diameter. And they also sell one that is uh, eight inch, eight inches wide. And I think the holes are probably twice, uh, half as, as far apart. Okay. So uh, I, I use this an awful lot in, in, uh, for, for making circles on, on wood. And it's, it's got a little tab here so you can hang it up on the wall where you do, you don't lose it, even though I've maybe lost a couple of them. I don't. I don't know. But anyhow, it's uh, uh, and I do not know what uh, what Lee Valley call calls them, but uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's very very useful. Thank you very much. I just over there today, but I'll be going back tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, there's <laughs> always a reason to go back. Yeah. Great. I'm going to pop back to our share screen and uh, try to get this up the same place. We'll come down here to Keith. A little bit more. So this is one that you're working on now. Yes, it is. It's a, a trivet for my granddaughter. Her boyfriend's from uh, Newfoundland. So I uh, had a picture of the lighthouse and then I put, I highlighted and then I, I did the one side and then I put it up against the, on the window and I drew the outline on the other side of the paper to do the opposite side of the wood because this lighthouse is in a trivet so it's on both sides of the wood. So I have the water yet to put in there, but I would just, I still have a little bit to do yet, but I just cut it out, so. That's what a good a idea. So you'll be, you'll be carving this uh, like a relief carving to start with, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and then adding your uh, burning to it after that. And the burning, yes, yeah. Well, we'll follow you on this one to see how this goes about. Okay. <laughs> now, is the water in the background or is it in front of the rocks? The water is uh, in, you know, behind the rocks and it's up the, the uh, top of the water level is about the top of the, that little shed on the, uh, on the okay. floor across. You can see your, your lines there, yeah? Yes. Now, going bravely where no man has gone before, you guys give me some input, output. It's well, from like a photograph. It. I like the eye. Yes. Yeah, the eye is really nice for sure. But the, the feathers, uh, great job on the, on the feathers and everything. Wow, that's a lot of work there, boy. One thing yeah. I didn't do enough of a shading to give it more round look. I tried to get the round, I guess, by putting smaller feathers towards the back, bigger ones at the front. Sure. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the shading would, I, I've, when I did this, it was a long time ago that I had not really incorporated shading other than to color things like I did at the top of the hair, at the top of the face and head. Yeah. Shading to me was more coloring than it was uh, shaping. As I that, say, no, uh, no straight lines, uh, nature. No, <laughs> you can't. Uh, you can't go wrong with an owl. 
Okay, there's a few more. Here's my example of the uh, dog that I did. Uh, what happened here is that it's again, it's not quite the right proportion, kind of on an angle, <clears throat> but I did that uh, photograph of the dog that I did the cutout to get the ears, the head, the shape, the eyes, the nose, to be sure I got the look of the uh, a Labrador. But my issues were that when it comes out on the paper, like on the piece of plywood, and you put the, the finish onto it, you get you lose the white in the dog, and the ears were not dark enough then. Mm -hmm. But the people liked it, so that was all that mattered. <laughs> but that's a good example of what using the... Uh, but with more shading and coloring with the tip now, I would do the ears a little darker and more around the nose. You see how that's, I've lost it. I didn't really put much color into around the nose at all. So in some ways it doesn't look like the same dog. And the background was just burnt black then? Yeah, just burnt black, yeah. So yeah. That, that picture's on my computer screen right there. Yeah. Now, how did you burn that black like that, uh, Murray? With, with, a, with, a, with a torch or what? No, it's all with a with a spade type of uh, a spoon, I should say, a spoon burner. Really, boy, oh boy, that's quite a bit of that's quite a bit of shading in that. Uh, it's it, a lot of burning. It took almost a lot of work. Yeah. 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 I'm just wondering, yeah. could could you could you have used one of those little um, micro butane torches, or is, is that possible? Or, or I tried it, uh, but again, I can't keep the same consistency. And this this was really uh, the background was probably the ace of this particular picture, in that you did the thing real slow. So you made each spoon indentation, almost to make it look like a stipple, as if you beat it with a small hammer and then it colored it. So almost every spoon burning on there is exactly the same size and shape, and all different angles too. So you you don't look like it doesn't just. You're not doing a little section of it and then moving to another one later on and not get the same temperature. I try to make note of what the temperature was when I was doing the burning, so the burning is absolutely equal all across. The background is probably better than the dog. <laughs> you get to know that after. Okay. Anyway, that was that one. Now we'll go to the next one here, two contrasts. Uh, this picture on the right-hand side is not near as clear because I took it from my website. But that was my model on the left, a, a really neat picture of a big horn sheep. But it was a long time ago I did this one. 2006, I think it says on there. That's when the back of it was quite a few years ago. I think you could do more rounding now. If you were... Yeah, I would do it totally different this time around, I think. Yeah. Okay. This is the kind of thing that you can make buckets of money at. Cats can be done very, very quickly. And people love their cat. I think maybe I've told you the story about it. I did this picture of this cat. It had died. And the woman was totally broken because of the losing her cat. It was such a friend. And uh, I did the picture. Her friend actually contacted me to be able to do the cat picture for her friend. So I did it and she was just thrilled with this. This is done in the middle of a little wooden plate. And she said immediately, she says, I've had five more cats done and died and I've got all the pictures. Would you do all of them too? <laughs> so at $45 a piece, it was a pretty good piece of material. That's for sure. I'm totally allergic to cats and I have a terrible allergy to them, but I can draw them and not sneeze. <laughs> so and is this Keith, on, uh, what, I've learned, what I've learned from you, Keith, is that if I was to do this again, I would do what I've been talking about tonight, is study one area a lot closer than I did. And uh, the actual picture of this cat would be about uh, on about a six inch plate. It was maybe four inches in the middle. So it was uh, it was a little bit smaller to burn, but I would do the hair totally different. But then again, uh, the challenge comes uh, in that you're doing it to make some money on it, so you don't take a lot of time. You just got to 
don't balance between those two all the time. Back in 1966, 67, when I was first started drawing cats, I was doing them on a soft velour paper. It's like a fuzzy paper to surface with soft pastels. And then at the end of it, you spray it with a fixative, which is like a hairspray, only doesn't have any smell to it. And I was putting out uh, four cats in an hour at $20 each. Wow. That was back when I was in 1966. I was making a whopping $150 to $200 a week. And I was making 200 bucks a night doing cats. <laughs> I stopped doing cats for quite a few years because I got sick of doing cats. <laughs> but it just shows you that you can make money at it. And if you are going oh. to do, you can advertise it. You can do somebody's pets. Uh, you do the pet's picture. Uh, in biography, it's... Uh, I know that you guys are such purists, you don't do that. You just do it for fun. You never sell anything except maybe Keith. The only twisted one here is because he goes to shows to make big money. <laughs> but anyway, what happens is that you, you can make money back to buy your burners and to buy your wood and so on. So uh, taking a bit more time on it, I could do a better picture than I would charge more also. So I still a bit of an idea of the cat. Any questions? Uh, what, is, what is the main wood that you use? Is that a birch? Uh, yeah, uh, no, that was a, uh, um, I bought that from uh, chipping, chipping away in Kitchener and there were basswood plates that they had somebody turned. Well, what, what I, wood is most people using for uh, this well, type that, of thing? It's a, what, a quarter inch thick something or? Yeah, it's a plate. They turned it, it's, it's almost like a saucer. No, so but what, it's shaped. It's you not just a flat. Sheet of wood, right? Four by eight sheet and cut it up. Yeah, Is that I, what you're I, using? I, I don't know how they did it, but it's a, it was a surf. It's a neat piece. They had it on sale, so I bought a bunch of them. No, but generally, regardless of this piece, what sort of wood are you generally using, all you gentlemen? What are you well, using? Well, I would use basically the birch plywood or maple. Maple doesn't have as much uh, soot from it. And if you get the burner just right, you don't have hardly anything on your tip either. Keith, maybe you can suggest yeah. something better on that, but. Uh, no, actually, since I've been working with Julie, I use maple plywood and uh, I ne never ever clean my burner tip anymore. Could you, is that at, a, at a Depot or home? Where, where do you buy that? I buy mine from um, Home Depot at two feet by two feet piece. Home yeah. hardware or one of the, some of them? Maple Kevin plywood. In the plywood section there at Home Depot. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it's, yep. it's, it's maple, maple plywood? That's right. Well, the top level is maple. Yeah. The top skin, but the inside probably is a mixture of whatever plywood they put, but that's the, the, the only issue that you have, I think, at least I have with the Home Depot stuff, <clears throat> is that it has some sort of a spray on it. And you can see it like it's been washed over with a soap or something. And it's almost like a glaze. So you need to kind of do a real fine sanding on it before you the start sand. burning. Because it, that stuff does affect the way you burn. And so it's sort of f fuzzy, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Are these four by eight size sheets what? or try them? No, what? They're two by two. Oh. Yeah. What? What's the name of the place in uh, Ottawa that sells sells wood? KVT or KVT? Yeah. They they sell uh, maple panels that are like smaller, like eleven by ten by sixteen or something like that. And uh, and they have have uh if you buy a hundred dollars worth i think they they have free shipping which is would kill you but uh i i've never bought from them but i've seen it and uh i'm gonna give them a try sometime i've never bought the plywood off them but i've i bought the maple wood solid wood that's yeah what using. yeah well anyhow uh have, have a look and uh uh, Murray, just a comment on those cats. I think it, that really takes you, takes me back to the old adage that uh, do the eyes first. And uh, if uh, 
if they don't knock your socks off, then start over. But uh, those eyes are are absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they're really really nice, very very uh, natural, you know. So you yes. cer- you certainly have honed your skills, Murray. It's coming along, but it's going to be a few more years yet before I feel as good as what he's getting. <laughs> With this COVID period too, there's a lot of animals being sold. Uh, not many of this because I I'm so busy doing the carvings that's going crazy on that part. I haven't got enough lifetime yet to do it all. <laughs> I'll show you the next pictures here. This is just for fun. This does involve pyography, together with carving, together with paint. And so what I've done is I've uh, when you take a look at these. I, I'm a cartoonist illustrator. I'm absolutely insane most of the time. So I don't do anything really for terribly serious except to poke fun at people. And when I did the carving of this, I did then the burning on the raw wood and I paint over it. The burning then when the paint dries shows up and I can see kind of the outline where I want the burning to be or where the paint, uh, the inside of the painting will go. So that's enough spoken about that. But here he comes now. This is a new biker carving. <laughs> Sebastian is his name. And Hog is his, a.k.a. Hog. The burning on the picture on the left, you can see it. He is a happy cyclist, just motorcyclist. He's got bugs in his teeth. <laughs> He's got his teeth. They're outlined after they're painted. I did the carvings first, and then I then I did the biography in the paint, and to outline or just find the teeth better. And the same when you come down a motor the motorcycle Harley Davidson, that was a little harder because this guy is all of ten inches tall, so it's got some um, you, you struggle sometimes with. You're not going to have it being perfect at all, but because of the content on the right hand side, sons of arthritis. <laughs> Now, you know that that comes from Sons of Anarchy. Yes. And the ibuprofen chapter is what this guy's from. <laughs> and you'll notice his pants. I took a long time to make sure that the basswood was shined right up. I usually use a matte finish spray on the things on the carving so they, they don't, uh, and so it'll be preserved better. But in this case here, I used, I, I, I masked off the top first with the masking tape and a piece of paper towel to cover it. And also the boots the same way. We'll see that in a minute here. And uh, then I spray it with a with a gloss finish. So this guy, the tongue in cheek thing is, you'll see it better here later, is that he has got problems with his anatomy as he grows older. He's got on skin tight leather pants to be really cool. So that's how the leather pads come out of it. I'll come to the next picture. It gets onto the side. I wanted uh, on the left hand side, you can see with the mouse going around, mom with a, with a rose, a real tough biker with a teddy bear. And I put hair on his body by using the pyrography tip. <laughs> and on the right side, he's got a snake in his arm. And here, these are done with the pyrography. Then I simply used the paintbrush to roughly uh, create it. He's got his boots down at the bottom carved. And I think the last picture comes up here. It's actually a video that I'll let you see here. Just a moment. There it is. Your little pedestals you can get from uh, Lee Valley. There's solar panel on the front of it. Plus it takes a, a one double A battery. And he rides around in the hog in his background. I bought that at CNE a few years ago. Uh, it was made in Vietnam on the streets and uh, brought there for a sale. I finally found a purpose for it when I carved Sebastian. He stands with his motorcycle. Now you'll <laughs> notice when he comes around again, his belly's hanging out underneath his shirt, his belly button showing, and there's lots of hair sticking on his belly. <laughs> That's a real prize winner for sure. A crazy <laughs> helmet took as long as it did to carve the head because it's hollow inside. And I can either sit it on the front of the motorcycle like he's going in for coffee. Uh, Sebastian's actually bald on top with a long kind of a once upon a time a mullet. And I think that's pretty close to what he, sh- he shows all of it. So I come at different angles with this picture. 
And the unique part about uh, YouTube, uh, you can put the video up. I haven't put it onto my channel because we're trying to reserve a lot of space on that for the caricature carvers. But uh, the Facebook also gets you, uh, gives you quite a bit of space. You can upload the video after you take it right away. They process it and keep it up and then people, your friends can see it that way too. You notice with the skull with the biker, it's two pistons crossed for the power. So there he is, your kneecap showing. Obscene, his uh, junk showing down the middle in the center between his legs. And that's Sebastian. I don't know, something happened there. After I painted it, then I uh, apply the uh, a dark wax finish to it that you rub off and it makes an antique finish the way it gets creases. So that's it. So did you use an oil pencils or, or did you use the uh, watercolor? Watercolor paint. And some are, some are acrylics. So it's just something you buy from Michael's for about $1.50, a little tube, and put it on. And then when you use a matte finish spray, it gives you that luster to it. It's really, really something nice. That's different. <laughs> there we are, boys. Thank Any you. Any further comments or thoughts? A great evening. I like this. Mm. So did I. It was great. So this style of meeting is a little different than what we had up to now, having, uh, you know, challenges and that kind of thing to try to come up with an idea. But eventually you can't do this every time because we're all going to show our material from back to 1929 up to now and be all done. <laughs> Pretty soon the cow's going to kick the pail because she doesn't want to get milked anymore. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> if you have other ideas, I was thinking like one project would be possibly to have somebody come along and do a session of teaching uh, one particular item or one particular foul, uh, idea. So Keith, that idea of this gal called uh, Brenda Wilkie. Brenda Wilkie. Wilkie. I wonder if we did something of that sort to take a look at one project uh, get a, a video, take a select one video for, for us to look at as a group and then give it a try to do that project from her video. Yes. And then come back and show each other what we did. Can, okay. Can uh, you leave that with me to dig up a, a project? Sure. And what I'll, what I'll do is... Uh, uh, send everybody the link to to the the uh, uh, the write up on and uh, sort of go through it, and then maybe maybe uh, do one where she's got both the write up and the YouTube video, and we could could kind of go through uh, the the video too. I don't know. We'll talk about it, Murray. So, what what do you fellows think about that? With Keith has suggested now, and what I've suggested. We all kind of see where we're all at now individually with what we put on the screen tonight. But would that help you in your burning to do that? It would It would definitely help me. Sure, it'd be a good idea. Yeah, it sounds like a good I idea. I'd be out of it right now for some reason. I've lost it. Yeah, I think I think that'd be a good idea. Probably, like, I'm, I'm far from any, doing anything complex, but I mean... Uh, I'd certainly give it a shot anyway, you know. Let, let me have a look at let me have a look at what she's she's done, Murray, and uh, I'll come up with some ideas and then then we'll uh, uh, get together on a zoom and uh, and pick something out. I think maybe do it by this uh, see but our next zoom would be probably into the early part of December. Yeah. If we do it every second month. Okay. And what I'm looking at there is if you would do a little bit of that research fairly soon. Yes. Then uh, suggest the links, uh, like put the link onto her video or some of the information up and let us take a look at it. And then from the, uh, if this last email that I sent you basically see everybody's email address on that. You could just simply uh, use that as your uh, uh, email contact list. 
And that way we, we can start on a project fairly soon to get something done on it, to experiment mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Does that sound okay to everybody else? Lloyd Thomas, what do you feel? Yep, that sounds good to me. I'm okay. I think it's a great I... idea. Yep. Brian Graham? Yep. Yeah, that sounds good. I like that idea. Okay, yep. uh, who else? Brian Bell. I'm, I'm okay, Mike, can you hear me? We can hear you. Well, I can, I've lost my picture anyway, I'm in agreement. <laughs> okay. My screen's gone funny on me, I don't know what's happened. So we're we ready, to, we're just about ready to finish anyway, so. Okay, Alan Nethercott, you, you uh, spoken yet tonight, you got your muted right now. Anyway, I think I'll just turn off, I'm, uh, I'm, leaving, the, I'm leaving the meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been uh, very helpful. Great. Interesting. Okay. Alan, are you there? See you guys in December. I think I'm well, like I spinning might... around. I don't know how I'm even going to get out of here. Have I got audio? So, Alan, tell us uh, how do you feel about that kind of thing for? Uh, kind of a, a group project. Yeah, I think that's a good that, idea. I, I think that, that, that's a good idea for sure. Yeah, I think I'd be quite willing to give it a shot. Um, and uh, thank you very much, Keith, for, for doing this. Great. Yeah. Good. Anybody else wanted to contribute something there? I think we got everybody. Okay, Keith, it's in your hands. Okie doke. Don't Could, get too complicated. We're not going to be doing a no. chasing a butterfly. No. Okay. No. That, <laughs> that's a one 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 shot deal, anyhow. Okay. But uh, yeah. Great. Murray, Murray, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Do you have? Uh, I kind of forgot to follow up on the uh, magazine. Uh, do you have any copies of it left? Yes, I do. Could you? send me an email as to how much it would you would like to uh if i wanted three copies how much it would cost to get them did you get your membership in yet no i haven't but i i will if that helps and is that in then you'll get one copy and then i'll talk to you the rest by email okay very good okay we'll do, i'll do that right away okay great okay. Well, have a great couple of weeks and months Get too busy over christmas slow down take a deep breath there is life after Christmas. <laughs> okay. Good. Thanks very much, Murray. Thanks a lot, Murray.